Awesome. So we're going to talk a bit about how we as GitLab use our own platform to collaborate as design team within a larger team. Mm -hmm. The first aspect I would love to show you is our onboarding. Um, when a new team member joins our design team, the first thing we do is create a new issue for them. Issues are most often more used for uh, reporting bugs or reporting feature ideas, but we use it heavily for our own processes as well. Hmm. So when that new team member joins, we create this issue. So they already feel welcome on the platform. They start using the platform themselves. And we have a ton of interesting information on here around how you can learn about for example, version control with Git and GitLab, which is very important for us. You learn how to communicate as a company, find the general guidelines. You can have a look at our entire UX handbook section. Oh, fantastic. We try to be very transparent about how we work and what kind of tools, what kind of processes we are using. Mm. So new designers directly see all of this department workflows, design projects and documentation, and so on. Um, mm. It will bring you into specific areas of the product that you might want to learn about. It will tell you about the personas. And so there's a lot of important information around how a designer can use GitLab already oh. just in this one issue. I love how it's um, it's like documentation, but it's laid out like a to-do list almost. So you can... You can always go back to see where you're up to and and yeah i really like that approach to it yeah and it's sometimes taking designers quite long to really finish all of these tasks because yeah. sometimes you only get to it in like your your third week or maybe even sometimes later but yeah. it's great that you can still always go back and don't have to go to a specific person and ask them hey what was this about again mm -hmm. it's still documented as part of the template uh, set up as like a template that you put onto an issue and then you yes. add the data to um to that issue exactly so when you create a new issue you will see that there's an area here that says choose a template mm. and this is where we have the onboarding issues oh that's fantastic mm. we also have other templates such as for our UX scorecards, which are a usability testing workflow, a heuristic evaluation. So we depend heavily on these templates to, to help guide us and to help streamline our processes. Hmm. And is it easy to like create a new template? Absolutely. Um, as you can see here right now, all of the templates are marked down. And hmm. if, if our designers start using GitLab, it really helps to learn how to use Markdown. Like, yeah. how do I make something bold? How do I create a list? Mm -hmm. All of this is really, really simple here if you invest the time to learn Markdown. Um, to create this template, you just go to the .gitlab folder, issue templates, and there you have the Markdown file that actually creates this template. So to okay. create a new template, just create a new Markdown file. Well, that's great because then you can view it as Markdown and then what it will look like as well. So yeah, it's basically like uh, back in the day when people used to make the MySpace pages. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. And we already have this switch here just when you preview them, not even in the new issue form, but just as a file, you can say display source yeah. and you can say display rendered content. Mm, fantastic. So that's the first part. And what we have started doing more and more is create dedicated prioritization issues. This is really where the work together with your team starts and where the team comes together as a group to collaborate and to prioritize. Hmm. Our designers work in smaller teams of each one product manager, one product designer, a couple of engineers, one technical writer that also takes care of maybe sometimes some other teams, but it's yeah. the typical smaller squad system. Mm. And so when they have a new milestone, our milestones are one month each, they start discussing what do they want to prioritize in there. And we use different tools like Mural for these discussions. 
but everything flows back into the GitLab issues as a resource. So you can see while we create the content in Mural itself, I hope it loads. Yeah, it does. So while we create all of this and while we work on this in here, afterwards, the designer goes in, publishes it, has a screenshot in the issue, puts a recording link there and makes sure that everything is documented and that we have everything in the issue for everyone to, to be able to access it. Hmm, that's good. And when then we have agreed upon what we want to prioritize, we track with our boards how the progress is going so that yeah. the entire team and here the code review team knows what is the back end team working on what's the front end team working on hey, yeah That's what's the ux team working on and you even have the assignees here so that i know this mm. is the person going to work on this issue yeah because i think that's something i was trying to understand when i first saw um like the way that issues can be organized in boards milestones and iterations is like i was trying to relate it back to what we currently use so i was like okay which which of these is the favro board which of these is the trello uh which is the sprint which is the backlog you know um trying to relate it to terms that we already use and i know that all of them can be used in quite a flexible way right yeah absolutely mm. We depend heavily on the labels. As you can see here, we have a large amount of labels. Yeah. And just to give you an example, like this one with, I think it must be about 20, 25 labels. I can quickly go into each one to tell you about why it's added to this issue and what we are using it for. Mm -hmm. So the actionable insight is something we use for um, when we see a problem coming up in a research study we create an issue for it that we want to fix this we create a proposal directly in the issue so that you can see the designer who works on this talks about what the problem is talks about why they have discovered this and then we add the designs for how to solve this and let me see if we have the designs somewhere here Currently, they are very much at the top. So yeah, this is how we want to solve it. So you can see it's the direct translation of something that came up as UX research. Yeah. Then we have category. So which team does this feature belong to? We have um, made sure that it's a deliverable. So we group issues for milestone into deliverable and stretch we mark it as core so that we know if it will be just for our premium users or if it will be for all of our users we have assigned it a design weight we try to track how tough this issue is to uh, design for so that we don't over over schedule for milestones for our designers same yeah. as for the front end weight way to do it because right now we do like sort of the planning poker thing yeah. where we have you know like if it's a a big issue and then like if it's like a high priority but it's good to kind of define whether the it's uh, the work is done in design or development there especially if we want to kind of have a task that follows all the way through from design to uh, development there mm. absolutely and what you can see even in the issue itself we also have a way to track the weight in here mm -hmm. um we are still working on figuring out whether we need to add multiple weights to one issue or whether we need to become better in splitting issues up into, for example, one design issue, one implementation issue. So there's still some work needed from us here to understand what kind of workflow we want to really push for. Mm. Right now we are solving this with labels if we have multiple teams working on the same, on the same issue. Mm. And then you can see that we also have workflow ready for development. So that's how we communicate as designers, which stage is this in? Because yeah. oftentimes it's tough to tough to know for a developer, can they already go in and start working on it? Or do yeah. they still need something from the designers? So in that workflow kind of uh, label section, 
because you, you have like workflow and then you have the different kind of statuses for it, right? So is that kind of saying the design where it is in the design process and you have all the different design process parts attached to that workflow label? Not even only the design process. Let me quickly see whether I can bring this up. Product planning GitLab. So we have the product development flow and there are all the stages that our issues can be in are being tracked. Let me quickly see here. So the first one is workflow validation backlog. That's when we know there's a problem, but we need to validate either the problem or the solution. Yeah. We have the problem validation. That's when it really goes into the problem validation process. Same as with the design. So as soon as a designer starts working on it, they put it into this one. Then if they have created a solution and we need to test whether it satisfies the need of the user, we put it into the solution validation mm -hmm. workflow stage. If it comes out of that, um, we either put it into planning breakdown to make sure that we pull in engineering to understand how large the scope is and if there's maybe any any additional aspects needed or we put it further into ready for development and then it goes into scheduling if it needs to be scheduled it can go into i think in dev is also another one that comes yep in dev so that's when the developers are working on it in review blocked verification and that's the entire workflow for all teams that's great. But um, going back to the board, um, do, do people find it confusing with so many kind of labels on, ta on one task? It sometimes does obviously get confusing, but you learn how to read the labels. Yeah. Um, it's that's, just... That's how it is when many different groups are working on the same thing. Um, because that that was um something that I was thinking about. One one of the things that we really like about the project management tool we use now is that cards can live on multiple boards, but I guess they can here too, because the boards are related to the labels that you want it to show, right? Exactly. If I would now hit create list, I would have a new list and I could select here a label that groups all of the different issues that have already this label and this milestone attached to it and that show all of the miles, uh, all of the issues then with these two aspects and with this extra aspect. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, it's, it's very flexible. It absolutely is. And what you can also see is that we also have epics and we as a team have already grown so much that it's become pretty tough for us to use our own feature. So I hope this is gonna work. Um, I might have to scope this down a bit, but when you work as a team on, on the roadmap, you will see that all of the larger epics, because one issue or multiple issues can belong to one epic. Yeah. And you will see that we have then, for example, the milestones here as mm. an overview and everything that belongs as an epic into this one milestone will show up here so that you have some kind of a roadmap on here. Right, one yeah. example, removing a certain framework from the feature. Mm. Where does this fall in? And so this is where we can understand when would this come in? Is it delayed? Is it on progress? And mm. what does this milestone look like? Yeah. That's fantastic. Cool. Um, mm. Next piece I could go into is how we are designing in issues and how we're giving feedback, if that's interesting for you. Yeah. For sure. Okay. So I think my browser just froze. Let me quickly make sure I close all other tabs here. Okay, I don't know whether it's the Google Doc or whether it's something else, but let me try. 
okay, it seems to be the Google Doc. So this is the issue I wanted to bring up. This was an exploration that one of our designers started. This was more internal for the design team. And we wanted to look at a larger change. And so we didn't really need deeper involvement from other teams yet. We just wanted to keep this inside the design team. So what we are doing usually is then to start doing, uh, start designing it in Figma. Yeah. And then when we feel like we want to move it into an issue, we don't have to do the typical thing of copy pasting. We already have a plugin from ourselves where you can upload designs directly to GitLab. So if you just want to move this one, is this that one, uh, plugin sorry is it a public plugin or is it it is oh that's good get that plugin so if you search for it you can see this is exactly the one i was talking about uploading designs from figma into the gitlab issues fantastic mm. and when you do this you will directly also use our design management feature which is something we have built for designs because we notice that often we put a certain image into a comment and then people start commenting on it, but it really gets out of hand because yeah. you have to explain which area of the design are you commenting about. And so what we did was to create a very similar view to actually what Figma has, hmm. where you have all these different hotspots where oh, you can you then- can this in GitLab. Exactly. Oh, and so you can annotate this, you can have discussions about this, you can talk between the different team members about this aspect, you can link it to other issues, other merge requests, and so on. So this is exactly how we are using this. Great. You can also jump to the next designs on that page to see how it would progress. So this is something we have started to build for our design users. Mm. And then we obviously also have a lot of feedback happening. Let me just reload this to make sure. Okay, now it seems to work again. To make sure that you're not only collaborating within the team mm. of designers, but also of all the engineers and mm. so on. Okay, it seems like Google Docs is really slow, so I'll just take the ID and pull up the issue. Because what often happens is a designer brings up a proposal of something to solve mm. and they need to start discussing with the different team members. Mm. And so when this happens, you pull it in here, you add all the different labels and then you ping your product manager mm. and then they start discussing is this how they want to solve this problem. Do they need anything else here? Mm -hmm. They can pull in one of our technical writers to give feedback on some of the solutions. And all of this design discussion with the other team members happens inside these issues. Yeah. Um, you can obviously also pull in the engineers, but this is kind of how our workflow of bringing in the different team members works here. That's really good. Mm. Yeah, I mean, our uh, development team already started to use uh, some of these kind of uh, functions yeah. already. So that would be, I think they would be very happy if we <laughs> brought them into the, the discussions on the design stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And this is really amazing because you will have these discussions documented. Um, oftentimes what happens when designers make a decision is it gets lost somewhere in the entire process and the entire flow. Yeah. And what was amazing to me when I joined GitLab about two years ago, I needed to start working on the first features and designs. And I could just go into the history of these issues and look at why did we decide for doing it a certain way. And this is really where you can see the discussion happening. Hmm. Um, I wouldn't have expected it to be this helpful. It really has saved my life a couple of times already. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Um, but then a very interesting aspect also comes in. Oftentimes engineers create something and you need to review it as a designer, right? Mm. And 
this is a process I think we as an entire industry of designers and developers have not really figured out how to do well yet. What we are trying to do right now is giving people a preview of what the change is going to look like oh, that's good. right in this merge request. Mm. To give you a very simple idea of how this could work for your team is this is the repository or the project for our entire handbook. So everything you see on our public handbook is hosted in this repository. Mm. And one of our engineers wanted to make a change. He wanted to add a process for designing, uh, for, for the implementation issue of design and engineering collaboration. You can see that he added a couple of paragraphs to this and I can now either read this which in a handbook is still easy because everything is like just text. Yeah. But I can also say, I wanna view app. I wanna preview the changes. And then I can directly scroll down to the engineering and design implementation issues part. And I directly see this change live. Wow. You can see that this is now a URL that's that has been prepared just for this one issue, uh, mm. just for this one merge request. I can still go in and say, if I take the entire same URL and bring up the current version, just mm. by changing the URL to our official version, mm. you can see there's not this paragraph. And so instead of having to imagine what this change will bring or having it to somewhere run locally on my own platform, on my own machine, I can just go in and see what the impact would be. That's great. Yeah, and this is something we we hope will be used more and more by teams. Um, it's fantastic and can really help speed up the process of reviewing mm -hmm. from a design standpoint. Yeah. So is this already available for people to use or is it? Um... Yep, it is. Um, yep. It's called Review Apps. Mm. And it requires some configuration by your teams. But yeah. this is where you would have to point them towards to, to see how they could implement this. Mm. Fantastic. One other option um, that we have integrated over the last couple of, of months is that we know when people want to make changes to the code, mm. it's either in the local IDE on their machine, or they have to go into the text files on the web UI. And both is not great for a designer because they also need to sometimes have a running version of the code somewhere on their platform, on their machine, but they don't want to maintain the entire um, dependencies, they don't want to create like an entire environment. And what we brought in is a tool called Gitpod. It's another open source company. And when I click on this link, it would bring up a URL. Uh, okay, I don't have one right now, that's too bad. But it would, let me quickly try to bring this one up. Um, it would land on, on a kind of web version of VS Code. So it's a text editor with a terminal with, um, let me see what I, what I can show to you, to you here. Mm -hmm. Docs. So it really pretty much looks like. Yeah looks like, uh, yeah. So it looks like just a typical text editor, just like VS Code. Hmm. But what's amazing about it is that when you run this, your team can set up the entire workflow for how usually this would have to be configured on the local machine. And that it then runs a preview in the browser and you can directly also make code changes or, for example, CSS changes in the browser 
and commit the changes. That's so cool. It means it's, that designers can really collaborate with the developers in a really meaningful way. Exactly. It's yeah. been incredibly helpful for some of our designers who know very well how to code. They either just create the changes themselves or they point to them. Mm -hmm. Other designers have gone a more collaborative approach and said, I want to view this live together with the engineer and see how they are working on this and then be able to give them direct quick feedback. Yeah. So it really depends on what, what capacity of code changes they are comfortable with. Mm -hmm. But for example, CSS, we oftentimes see the designers making these changes themselves mm -hmm. with this tool. Wow, that's cool. It's going to take about four to five minutes for us to, to set this instance up every time you create a new branch, every time you create something new. So it's mm. still in the loading part, but mm. it's incredibly helpful. Um, yeah. I really, so you can see it, it pulls the entire image down. And then when it's ready, you can just look at the preview, make changes, review it. That's what it's used for. Yeah, that's really good. This was pretty much the entire the entire process going from onboarding all the way to working with your teams. It's great. I actually don't have any more questions because <laughs> I think you've covered everything. Um, That's awesome. Thank you so much for showing me all of that. It's really interesting to see uh, so many things that I didn't even know you could do in GitLab, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that's really that's really the biggest part. There's so much possible, and it's mm. still tough for us sometimes to figure out which features do we directly want to adopt for our own process, and which one do we first want to see how it's being used by, for example, the engineering team. Mm. One example: we currently have a feature called iteration, and yeah. this is for smaller steps inside of a larger milestone. Um, it can yeah, be incredibly so helpful. Use that for like uh, sprints, sort of. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. This is exactly what it was intentionally being implemented for. Mm. It really helps us as designers to split larger problems down into smaller, actionable things. Yeah. Um, so we have tried to use it. We now are in the retrospective of how we want to use it. And then we're going to decide what the process is. Mm. Then we're going to put it into our own handbook that we are hosting. And then each designer will adopt this process in the way they feel mm. is the right one for their team. That's great. Yeah, because that was my, when I was looking into this the other day, I was just trying to figure out how we would use epics versus milestones versus iterations, basically. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And this is, this is a great, great topic. And it really depends on each team. Um, mm. Some versions of how to use epics make sense for certain teams. Some versions only make sense for other teams. I don't want to prescribe or give too many recommendations because it's so much up to each team to figure this out. But really, this, this way of categorizing multiple issues into one epic, and then maybe even grouping this one epic into another parent epic, it's yeah. really powerful. Yeah, yeah, totally. I think what our plan is going to be is that we're going to try out using GitLab for our project management stuff just within our design system team at first. Yeah then um, see how that is and take it to the rest of the designers if it's working well. And um, so, yeah, I think that I think that it could work really, really well. Um, so yeah, very positive to it. That's great to hear. And if you're curious how our own design system uh, repository is set up, I can actually point you towards that one. Hmm. Um, let me just quickly see, do we have pajamas? This is not the one. 
Why is it called pajamas? Because we all work 100% remote and asynchronously. And so that's the reason everyone works on the designs in their pajamas. Yeah. <laughs> that's the entire backstory. We even I think have. I think at this point now, we do everything in our pajamas, right? Yeah. yeah. Go to the Absolutely. Shop, go everywhere. <laughs> yep. And it's funny because we really. GitLab was pretty much remote from the beginning on. And we already established these remote and async patterns for how to work together as a team pretty much five, six, seven years ago. And yeah. now seeing how quickly every other team basically in the world had to adopt the same ones, yeah. it's fascinating. Yeah, I can imagine. So you're quite used to working at home, really. Absolutely. Yep. We did this before and we have one larger company offsite every nine months. But mm. besides that, it's 100% remote. We don't have an office anywhere in the world. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's fascinating. It's really and, like, cool. work with people all over the world, really. Yeah. Our team is really worldwide. Even my team of designers that I'm managing is in Australia, Europe, in mainland US and on Hawaii. So you can see oh. <laughs> just in this one small team of four designers, it's basically across all time zones. That's awesome. So just quickly, this is our pajamas design system repository. If you ever want to look into this, um, Tori is our design manager for that part. She would absolutely also probably love to hear from you if you decide to go down this way and how we can make it more helpful. Mm. But you can maybe already see a couple of ways how we have set up patterns for ourselves here. Mm. Yeah, that's great. I'll add this to the doc and then you got it. Mm. Cool. Perfect. Anything else that I can be helpful with? Um, I can't think of anything else. I just want to say thank you. It's really, really kind of you to meet with me and talk me through all of this stuff. Um, yeah, there's, there's so much um, great info there. And yeah, you said that this session is recorded, right? And you are you going to post it on your YouTube thing? Because then I can show that to the rest of my team as well. Absolutely. It depends on whether you are okay with um host uh, posting it completely public or just with the link to the video that's up to you either um, is fine whatever's best for you perfect yeah. then i'm going to make it completely public so you can just share the link with your entire team and then everybody can review it and can see what we talked about today fantastic thank you so much amazing yeah. no worries at all let me quickly stop recording